Welcome back for part two. Um, so uh, we just paused on this last note uh, with a teaser of uh, that we're going to be looking at advanced methods for doing wind farm design using systems engineering approaches and optimization. So how do we do that at DTU? At DTU, we do holistic design of wind farms for LCOE using what we call our Top Farm tool suite. So Top Farm is the DTU wind energy software platform for optimization of wind farm design and operational strategy in both onshore and offshore applications. <sighs> That's a lot. So it is a, a flexible tool set that we use for wind farm design that captures all of those different elements that I was talking about earlier for LCOE. So the energy production, the turbine capital costs, the balance of system costs, operational expenditures, et cetera, all feed into this top farm platform so that we can do holistic design of wind farms. So we've got the energy production side right here. We sometimes also look at site suitability and loads. This comes down to reliability and, you know, is it okay to put a turbine in an area where you have some pretty strong wind flows? Will that turbine actually be reliable and, and uh, survive some extreme wind conditions there? So we take that into account. We look at control strategies. Um, how do we actually operate the wind farm and can that actually influence where we might want to place a turbine if we have certain ways to control the turbine or not? Um, we have a lot of work going on on the infrastructure side, looking at those other balance of system costs like I mentioned. So that can include the electrical system. That's a big cost driver we'll talk about. But also the support structures, you know, the foundations for turbines onshore or the offshore support structures where you have um, a big monopile um, attaching the turbine to the seabed, for example. We also take into account the operations, um, but if we're looking at wind farm design, often we kind of take a simple view of operations when we're doing the pre-construction design process, but we do take it to in, into account. And we also look at the, um, the financial aspects. Um, more and more, we're looking at more sophisticated ways of understanding the financial aspects, but often that's done in a relatively simple way too for farm design. And we may also look at other technologies. So we're here today talking about wind farms, but increasingly we're thinking about how might we design hybrid systems where it's not just wind by itself, but also potentially with solar technologies or batteries or other things. We won't look at that today, but that's a, an interesting area of development. So I mentioned the LCOE, right? We're trying to boil things down to a, a single metric. Um, LCOE is not the only such metric that's used in practice. There's uh, many other metrics, but this is the one that we'll focus on today. And as I mentioned before, LCOE is nice because it includes uh, the energy production side, which is very important because energy means electrons produce. It means uh, the amount of revenue that you're going to get out of the farm. And of course, that revenue needs to be balanced by costs. And so we have all the costs associated with the farm development, the turbine costs, the balanced system costs, operating costs, et cetera. And so we put those costs and the revenue together and we get LCOE. In terms of the farm design, you know, looking at where we place the turbines and other factors, um, there's a couple of uh, big factors that influence LCOE. The energy production and balance the system. And so often what we're looking at in farm design is how do we actually balance increasing the amount of energy production that we're going to get from the farm. And we can do that by uh, looking at the types of turbines that we select, where we put the turbines, and then the turbines will interact with each other through uh, wakes, um, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and then on the balance of system side, you know, the foundations I mentioned are very expensive, especially if you're talking about an offshore wind farm, as well as uh, the electrical system design, um, where you have to actually connect the uh, turbines together by cables, and of course those cables uh, cost money. So um, we're gonna start talking about the energy production side, then I'll talk a little bit about the balance system side for today, and that'll just give you a flavor of, of wind farm design um, and how we do it in practice. So um, PyWake, PyWake is within the top farm ecosystem I mentioned before. That is our uh, tool suite for doing wind farm energy production modeling. Uh, it also takes into account loads and control, but we'll focus on the farm flow today. So it's a multi-fidelity, meaning you can go from very, very simple models to more complex models, wind farm physical research uh, platform. And starting uh, from the, the lower fidelity models, we have what we call uh, engineering flow models. Um, these are pretty simple models um, that have been around now for some time, and we have a lot of different varieties of these implemented in the PyWake system so that you can choose which model you use for a particular, um, particular purpose. 
And the key thing about these uh, models is what they're trying to do is actually look at how do you actually um, calculate the power uh, for, a, uh, for a wind farm if you have a particular wind speed and inflow coming into the farm and you have the turbine set up in a particular position one after another, then the uh, energy extraction from the upstream turbine will actually decrease the amount of energy you produce from a downstream turbine, right? And so, of course, that process uh, um, involves wind turbine wakes, which I'm sure you've learned about in, in other modules. And so we're trying to minimize the waking of upstream turbines to the downstream turbines by, de by deciding where to place the turbines. Um, and so that's what we're doing in the wind farm design process. Uh, we can use very, very simple models to do that. We can also use more sophisticated models. So there's more sophisticated models that are part of the Pi Wake system. Um, Pi Ellipsis and Fuga are two that we can interface to from Pi Wake. Um, and of course, these are much more computationally intensive models, but they can capture more advanced flow physics. So nonlinear flow physics, um, they handle wind farm control, complex terrain, and other features that the simple models have trouble capturing. So we use these energy production models, we calculate the energy that's produced given a specific layout of where the turbines are, and that feeds into that denominator, that AEP within our LCO equation for wind farm design. But we also have to have the cost side. So for cost modeling, there's a number of different ways you can do it. Um, the simplest way to do cost modeling is to use empirical cost models. And there's a, a number of empirical cost models that you can find out there today that are publicly available to, um, to estimate the cost for wind farms given a certain number of uh, input parameters. Included in our top farms uh, tool suite, we have a, a DTU cost model specifically designed for offshore wind applications. And essentially it takes, uh, takes some uh, core parameters for a wind farm design, um, specifications of the machine, um, site resource conditions, uh, other factors, and then uh, gives you the turbine capital cost, balance system costs for that, that uh, numerator for the LCOE equation. You can have more advanced cost models, and we're increasingly using more advanced cost models in the wind farm design process that actually more uh, accurately capture the detailed design um, uh, features and their influence on uh, overall uh, system costs. Finally, you can go to schedule-based cost models, which actually capture the sequencing of activities over time. But these are often too computationally intensive to use in a wind farm design process where you're trying to look at many, many different variations of designs to figure out which is the best one. So um, to do the cost uh, modeling, we want to account for, again, those key features of the design that actually drive the uh, overall cost. So the balance of system, um, which is composed of all those other costs beyond the turbine, is a significant cost driver for overall LCOE. And typically we focus on the foundation, the electrical systems, as two of the biggest uh, de uh, design drivers uh, for, for LCOE for wind farms. So infrastructure costs, um, they're key drivers in the capital expenditures. And as I mentioned before, collection system costs, as well as the foundations, these are some key uh, cost drivers that we look at for wind farm design. Here's an example of some of the, uh, um, the design tools uh, embedded in Top Farm that we look at for the infrastructure design. So the electrical collection system, um, that accounts for how do we actually lay out the cables that connect all the turbines together to bring the electricity to a single point, which can then be transferred to the electricity grid. So how we actually network the design or design the network actually of these cables is a, a significant design consideration and affects the overall capital costs uh, for the wind farm. If you have a land-based uh, wind farm, you also may need to consider how do you actually route uh, um, the roads that you use to uh, access the farm, uh, both for the installation as well as the longer term operations and maintenance. And so you may have complex terrain where you have hills. Um, and so how do you actually uh, uh, design the road system that will uh, support the, um, the access uh, of the site and the turbines? So these are just an examples of the types of models um, that we might use uh, for getting a handle on the cost side of that uh, LCOE equation. Um, and we couple those together with the energy side to get the overall LCOE. 
Another thing that we do is advance, uh, address some more advanced uh, design criteria. So um, here's an example of looking at exclusion zones. Um, so exclusion zones are, um, uh, you know, often uh, present where because of uh, land ownership or because of environmental considerations or archaeological considerations or other reasons, you may not be able to put turbines in certain places in wind farm. And this uh, adds complexity to the design problem that we need to then explicitly handle. Um, where do we put the turbines within a space, but also across multiple pa parcels that may make up our overall wind farm? So um, these more complex design considerations come into the process. We might need to consider the type and selection of the turbine, and maybe we have multiple turbines in the same, uh, same wind farm, um, and we may be able to adjust the number of them. Um, exclusion zones and land permits, as I talked to. Uh, setbacks and noise ordin ordinances. So there's a huge, huge number of factors that can go into wind farm design. So today you've only been exposed to, you know, just a few examples of the types of design considerations that we actually think about when we're doing wind farm design in practice. So all this sort of builds up to the LCOE. Um, and uh, we've created this uh, tool set that actually captures LCOE uh, wind farm design. And it's used now uh, in practice by developers and OEMs. And we're seeing more and more of this um, um, uh, uptake of systems engineering for wind energy in practice. Um, design for LCOE typically includes the energy production side as well as major cost drivers. So here's an example of a software workflow for doing LCOE design of wind farms. And as you can see, there's many different elements and it gets quite complex. So this is a pretty computationally complex uh, modeling framework um, and takes a sophisticated uh, designer to actually use that. So here's an example of the application of an LCOE driven wind farm design to getting a layout for a offshore wind farm where you have the placement of the turbines and the networking of the cables and embedded in there as well as the design of the offshore support structures as well. So all these factors, again, rolling up into LCOE. So that's just a small taste of what we do in wind farm design. It's a very active field, both in terms of research and industry practice, and we're looking for many people to get involved. Uh, wind farm design, it's a complex multidisciplinary design uh, problem. Lots of different engineering disciplines, different physics involved. Um, very complex. So we use these uh, systems engineering methods to help us uh, tackle how do we design and operate these complex systems. Some of the key design considerations for wind farms that we look at are the turbine positions and cells. Where do we actually put the turbines in the wind farm? And then how do we actually design the rest of the system? So the balance of the system, when we gave the example of the electrical system in particular, also the foundations, and how do we design those along with placing the turbines together to get the best possible LCOE. Of course, there's many, many different advanced features we can also look, look at in wind farm design, and, and those uh, depend very much on the specific uh, project. Top Farm we introduced you today, we just gave you a small flavor of what we do here at DTU Wind and Energy Systems for wind farm design. We use PyWake for doing the energy system modeling uh, to uh, get the uh, energy production estimate for a farm um, so that we can try to increase the amount of energy that we get from a given wind farm design, but also bring in the cost out of the, equ the equation through the larger top farm framework and the key cost drivers that affect uh, the overall LCOE so that we can get an optimal wind farm uh, design for both performance and costs. Thank you for coming today. And if you're interested in learning more, our work is ongoing and we welcome you to get involved. Uh, our Top Farm software and PyWake software are open source and uh, there's ongoing activities and development and use of the software for doing wind farm design in research and in practice. Thank you.